Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Katarzyna Pisarska and I'm the co-founder and co-chair of the Warsaw Security Forum. It's my immense pleasure to be moderating today's uh, session uh, at the Zero Corruption Conference entitled Ukraine and Georgia in NATO 2030, Alliance's Open Door Policy as a Tool of Enhancing Democracy and Good Government. We have a, a distinguished lineup of speakers that will be joining me uh, momentarily. Among others, uh, the Pro Deputy Prime Minister of Ukraine on European and Euro-Atlantic integration, Ms. Uh, Olga uh, Stefanishina, uh, but also uh, Rasa Junkiewiczina, the, the member of European Parliament and also former president of the NATO Parliamentary Assembly and from Georgia, the co-founder and vice president of the Georgian Institute for Strategic Studies, Irakli Proci, uh, which will again, as I said, uh, be um, discussing this important issue. But before we start our panel, I want to take us all across the Atlantic for these kind of framing remarks uh, that will be done by another special guest uh, of our today's discussion. I want to welcome uh, here Mrs. Lara Cooper, who is the Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Defense uh, uh, in the United States, uh, who, will, uh, who will give us, uh, again, framing remarks on a very important aspect of any type of aspirational um, enlargement, which is the, the military, the question of reforms of the defense and that specific agenda. Uh, Madam Cooper, it's wonderful to have you with us. Uh, as uh, we were told, we, uh, we are looking forward to for short opening remarks. And if you will allow, I will follow that up with a few questions. So, Madam Cooper, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening from the Pentagon. I wish I could be with you in person in Kyiv, but for now, video from the Pentagon will have to do. I'd like to thank the conference organizers for the opportunity to discuss an issue that I think about very frequently, the critical issue of defense reform. And I also want to provide some thoughts on the US-Ukraine defense relationship particularly in light of Russia's recent saber rattling and its buildup of forces in Crimea and along Ukraine's borders. To begin, I would like to reiterate America's unwavering support for Ukraine's sovereignty, territorial integrity, and Euro-Atlantic aspirations. Ukraine is a critical partner on the front line of Russian aggression. Russia occupies Crimea and fuels conflict in the Donbass in its attempt to change borders by force. We must not accept this as a fait accompli. Russia's aggression is not only a matter for Ukraine. It is a threat to Europe, to the United States, and to the stability of the international order. The United States has long understood that the projection of strength and unity amongst its NATO allies and partners are vital components to deter Russian aggression and coercion. In that vein, the United States is committed to ensuring that NATO's door remains open to aspirants when they are ready and able to meet the commitments and obligations of membership and to contribute to security in the Euro-Atlantic area. To that end, we continue to work with and urge the government of Ukraine to implement the deep, comprehensive, and timely reforms that are necessary to advance its Euro-Atlantic aspirations in support of a secure, prosperous, democratic, and free Ukraine. Ukraine has made tremendous strides in its 30 years of independence, and in particular, since the 2014 Revolution of Dignity. I'd like to cite just a few examples of progress in reform. First, Ukraine's passage of the Law on National Security in 2018 provided a legislative framework for aligning its national security architecture with Euro-Atlantic principles and constituted a major step forward toward its goal of achieving NATO interoperability. In March 2020, President Zelensky signed an amendment that separates the positions of the Chief of the General Staff from the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. This new system of command and control separates force generation from force employment functions, 
which is a core feature of Western military structures. Progress on other key legislative actions include the passage of the Law on Defense Procurement and advancing a bill that could remake Ukraine's SBU into a modern security service guided by Western democratic standards. Additionally, this past year, we were encouraged by the adoption of both the National Security Strategy and National Military Strategy, which codify national strategic objectives and set conditions for reform across Ukraine's defense enterprise. While the government of Ukraine has made substantial progress, there are some areas I'd like to touch on that require further attention. The United States encourages Ukraine to pass legislation that clearly delineates the duties of the Ministry of Defense and the Ukrainian Armed Forces. This will better align Ukraine's defense enterprise with the core NATO principles of democratic civilian control of the military. Regarding defense industry, we urge Ukraine to adopt a strategy to better support the needs of the Ukrainian Armed Forces and Ukraine economic objectives while implementing effective corporate governance and supervisory board principles that are in line with global best practices. Similarly, the United States believes that the adoption of foreign direct investment controls based on national security interests are vital to protecting Ukraine's critical civil and defense infrastructure from foreign exploitation. Effective defense industry processes and institutions will lead to sustained improvement in combat capability, reduce corruption, and open the door to increased Western investments. The Department of Defense also strongly encourages Ukraine to continue to implement its law on defense procurement to create a globally competitive process, increase efficiency, and enhance transparency in the defense procurement cycle. Additionally, while there have been promising human resource management reforms, Ukraine must continue to advance these reforms to truly transform the Ukrainian armed forces and pave the way for a Western style career management system. The United States is committed to assisting Ukraine with the implementation of these reforms and we maintain a robust advisory effort to help modernize Ukraine's military in line with NATO principles and standards. The annual national programs under the NATO Ukraine Commission are an invaluable resource to take forward the reforms that are needed to advance Ukraine's NATO membership aspirations. I encourage Ukraine to make the best use of this dedicated forum as well as the benefits of capacity building programs through NATO's comprehensive assistance package and more recently through enhanced opportunities partner status to promote greater interoperability through exercises and training. The United States appreciates contributions to these efforts from like-minded allies through a coordinated requirements-driven process. There is always room for individual allies to step up bilaterally and do more in terms of resourcing these incredibly important NATO programs. Today, I'd like to close these brief comments by mentioning how much I look forward to seeing uh, continued progress building on what Ukraine has already achieved. It is critical for all of us to work together to maintain the momentum behind the reform effort and the United States continues to welcome contributions and partnerships from allies and other partners. Finally, I also want to underscore the United States remains committed to continuing our political, economic, and military cooperation with Ukraine in support of an even stronger and more enduring strategic partnership between our two great nations. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak today.